in thinking about uh, the sermon today. It's an actual continuation of what I was talking about last week, uh, an attitude of gratitude. Uh, there's Every Sunday morning when I stand up here, um, normally Kevin prays or somebody prays and I immediately off into the sermon. But today I'm going to take just a moment to, to thank some folks. <clears throat> the praise band that comes every week, practices, uh, and as a, a group, uh, giving us music by which that we can worship by. And then there's always that group of folks back there in the back that, that uh, it, it, the only time you ever know they're back there is, is when something goes wrong and the lights don't come on or the microphone doesn't work. Then everybody turns and looks back that way. But those folks uh, just doing the, the announcements, uh, what a great, you know, what a great thing that is. What a gift to be able to do that. I'm thankful for you folks and for the ways in which that you add to our worship every Sunday. Thank you very much for doing those things. How many of you, I, I, don't raise your hand because I don't want you to embarrass yourself. How many of you at Thanksgiving were sitting around eating Thanksgiving dinner and strategizing and making plans about how that you were going to hit the stores on Thursday to make sure that you got the best deal? Now, I see some of you shaking your head. I have to tell you, I'm going to brag on my grandchildren this morning because my grandchildren do great things for me. They go to Amazon.com and they check off what they want on a wish list. And I go, check, 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 pay for it. It's shipped to my house. I wrap it and give to them Christmas morning. So I don't even have to leave my own house. Uh, and I thank God for that. But one of the things that happens is, is that I heard somebody talking about this the other day. I did go to the mall. I, I was over at the Concord Mills yesterday, and I was sitting listening to folks. I love to do that, just go and, and sit there and watch the world go by, and, and I hate to see the pain on people's faces, but I, I watch folks and, and see what they're doing. And one of the things that we've only got four weeks left of Christmas and now Thanksgiving, and it's that dread of Christmas coming. That Advent story, you know, Advent starts next week, and it's that anticipation of the greatest gift that the world has ever received, and all of a sudden, we're in dread of it. We dread, we dread this season, and I'm, today I want to talk about that just a little bit, to ask you to step back and to stop for just a moment. <clears throat> you may not know this name, but there's a violinist. His name is Joshua Bell, and Joshua Bell is a world-renowned violinist. Several years ago, the Washington Post did a, um, they did a little experiment. They had Joshua Bell go down to the train station there in Washington, D.C., and there he uh, went over to, one, uh, to a wall, and he put his violin case in front of him, and he threw a couple of dollars into it to seed, you know, to, to just to seed so folks would throw in. And there he stood playing his violin, now, Joshua Bell, let me give you some background on why that this is an important story. Joshua Bell, two days prior to that, had played in Boston, Massachusetts, to an audience of 4,000 people. And at that audience, each one of those people that were at that concert paid between $100 and $300 for a ticket. So this is not just one of those boys that's going to stand there on the street corner and try to make a living. Now, what's more amazing about that, the violin he's playing is a $3 million Stradivarius. And so Joshua Bell is there in the, in, in the, uh, over an hour's period, and they, they filmed this. If you want to see it, it's on YouTube, by the way. They filmed this, and over the course of an hour, almost 1,200 people went by him. And he is playing pieces from Bach and from the Masters, and he's sitting there playing and out of almost 1,200 people, guess how many stopped to listen to him? Six. Six people. Now, on the video, there's one person that actually recognizes him and said, hey, I saw you when you played at the Library of Congress. But all those other people were so busy, their lives were so filled up with something that they were on their way somewhere else, and they missed it. Now, I don't know about you, but it's difficult for me to pay $50 a, a person to hear somebody play in concert. But to come off the hip for $100 would be, whew, that would be tough for me. But to actually have that being done free, all I had to do was stop and listen. 
Will you stand with me as we hear what the Word of God says this morning? From Isaiah, the 11th chapter. A shoot shall come from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear. But with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be his belt, shall be the belt around his waist and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze. Their young shall lie down together, and the ox shall eat straw like the uh, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put its hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. And on that day, the root of Jesse shall stand as a signal to the peoples. The nations shall inquire of him and his dwelling will be glorious. Now, I've intentionally run through that passage that quickly because that's actually most of the time how we listen. I want you to close your eyes. Hold on to the back of the seat if you can't close your eyes and, and not be steady. <laughs> but I want you to close your eyes and I want you to listen this time. A shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid. The calf and the lion together and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze. Their young shall lie down together. Can you imagine that? And the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp. And the weaned child shall put its hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain. For the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. And on that day. The root of Jesse shall stand as a signal to the people. The nation shall inquire of him, and his dwelling shall be glorious. You may be seated. It's becoming Christmas time. I made the mistake the other day of saying to folks, now I, I tell you from up here a lot about my grandchildren, well, with our, our girls' schedule and all that goes on in our family, it's, it's difficult for us to find a time for all of us to be together at the same time. And in fact, this year we'd sort of decided that we would, uh, Deborah and I would just go to different places and do different things, and then our girls decided to change the schedule. And, but prior to that, I'd said to some of the ladies here at the church, and I, I've got to make myself a note not to do this. I said to some of the ladies at the church, I don't think we're even going to put up a Christmas tree. What? We'll come over. We'll do it for you. And I'm thinking, what, you know, what have I done? Why did I need to give them that piece of information? But the fact is, is, you know what? It just seems to be just... Man, I'm going to get you in trouble this morning, so I just will tell you that. It just seems to be a lot of bother to do all that. To, to once again, you know what, putting up the Christmas tree, is it really necessary to do that, to have the spirit of Christmas, this a spirit of anticipation, 
is it really necessary to, you know, to put myself out there for that? Do I really want to do that? And yada, 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 the story goes. So last night, I go up into the attic and I pull down the Christmas tree and, you know, we moved just this summer and now I'm having to look here and there and I'm just, and I'm up there and it's cold in the attic and I'm just sort of grousing under my breath. I don't want to be doing this. And I pull it down and Deborah starts taking it out of the box and I start taking things out that over the years that our girls have given us and the ones that are important to the grandchildren and as each one of those, as each one of those went on the tree, I'm feeling more ashamed about my attitude <laughs> and thinking, you know what, this is great. I, in looking at that, it's not that it's a Christmas tree. I'm looking at it, I'm looking at years of things, of wonderful things that that tree reminds me of. And I especially like the little Snoopy and Linus and things that we put on the, that plays the little Christmas songs and plays them in symphony with each other. I love it because it reminds me of myself to slow down. It reminds me to think about the things that are important to me. You know what? Thanksgiving is a time that is a season to do that, but especially Christmas. Because at Christmas, what is it that you could offer somebody that really is of infinite worth? What is it that you could afford to give to someone that would be so incredibly spectacular that they would sit there and they would marvel at it and that, that just it would not lose its luster in the next 10 or 15 minutes of them looking at it and receiving it? What sort of gift could you give somebody that would be that what would be the perfect gift that you could give somebody there's uh, tim allen plays in this movie called the santa claus anybody ever seen that movie the santa claus yeah did you see the santa claus 2 i i, I like the santa claus 2 there's a, there's parts in the movie i really like but i want to tell you about this one part where that tim allen has been the santa claus now for about eight eight years but then he finds out he's got to get married in order to remain the Santa Claus. And so he begins dating this woman that works as a principal in a school. And so she invites him to a, a school Christmas party. And, and the teachers, Chris, are just, I mean, they're excited. They're really excited that he's there. They're so excited. They're sitting there just with their faces down and looking at the table. Another meeting, another time that we've got to be here. And so Tim Allen stands up in that movie and he yells out a word that really should bring something to all of our attention. He yells out, fire! And they look at him. And he says something that's very profound. I think you all have lost the spirit of Christmas. And so he says, you know what? Y'all need a gift. And the girl that he's dating says, we don't have gifts. And he said, yeah, I've got a bag right here. And he begins to pull out gifts and he calls those people up to, that, to the stage one by one and gives them a gift. And the first person that comes gets the gift. And he, he takes it and he, you know, he's just shuffling his feet like this, like this is such. But when he opens it, it's something that he wanted as a child. And it takes him back. The memory floods back into his life about days gone by when things were much, much better in his life, he thought. But his disappointments had just, you know what, it seemed like that one disappointment had followed another and another and another. And so things had never really been right. But in one moment, everything was right in his life. Have you ever had a moment like that? That in one moment, everything in your life just was, is right. And every person that came up are taken back in time as he gives a gift of knowing what truly the desire of their heart was. Now, The perfect gift, what would that be? The perfect gift would be that families that have been fractured and families that have been broken and families that have incredible things that keep them apart if for one moment those things could just disappear and everything was right just for a moment, just for a moment. Or if that child who was rebellious and 
was having trouble finding their way in the world, if for one moment that light came on in their head that this is exactly what I need and where I'm going, and a parent could find themselves just at ease, at peace with everything is right. The perfect gift, folks, is not something that you can go and, and purchase off of a store shelf somewhere. The perfect gift is not something that will last just for a few moments. I'm reminding several years ago when our first granddaughter was old enough to know sort of what paper was on the, on the gift. My wife and I had searched and searched and searched trying to find the perfect gift. And we found, grandparents are going to understand this, we found a lot of perfect gifts for that little girl. I was incredibly heartbroken when she sat down there in the pile and began to open those boxes and began to play in the paper and the boxes and wasn't really interested in what was in the box. She was more interested in the paper, the crinkle, the noise, the, the beauty of the paper and, and how it sounded. And I remember sitting there watching that little girl thinking how incredibly foolish I was and how incredibly intelligent she was that she recognized that, you know what, there was nothing in that box that was of really ultimate worth. She was living in the midst of the moment and enjoying that. She had balance, something that all of us need to understand, something about of just putting aside everything that's going on in the world. We've just been through one of the, uh, a political season that... Um, I almost, I almost threw a shoe through my television. I just shouldn't have said that here. But I almost did because somebody said, I wonder who's going to be running in 2016. And I, wanted, I just wanted to throw a shoe through the television. If I'd made sure it hit the guy on the other side of it, I would have thrown it, I guess. But we've just been through a, a period of, of where that there's been such vitriol that's been spewed out and people are polarized. People are, people are beaten down. People are are frightened people the adjectives the adverbs just keep coming and keep coming and keep coming but let me remind you that in the day that jesus was born the political system was just as broken the corruption was just as deep there was much going on in the world and in the midst of this came a gift from God, the perfect gift. I would ask you a question today, and, and if, you, if you will answer this question within yourself, if you can answer it quickly, then, then good. Then that's a good thing. But why in the world would God love you enough, and why would God love me enough that He would send the perfect gift into the world, and in knowing that we might reject it? Why would God do that? Why would God send such perfection into the world to where that of telling us that he was coming and yet the world, the Bible says, received him not? I think the most perfect gift that we could give this Christmas would be to understand that hope never dies. It never goes away. It's always out there. No matter where we are or what's going on in our life, it's always out there. The gift to be unwrapped, the gift that is always present and before us. And yet, sometimes we're so busy or we're just, we don't recognize it. I want to challenge you to do something between now and next week, actually. I don't want to give you a long time to do it. I, I, I like to give you these exercises just because I think they're fun. I want to tell you a story before I give you the exercise. I had a woman that, in a former church that told me one Sunday she was sitting in line at, at Chick-fil-A. And as she sat there in line, the woman in front of her just was taking so long and said she could see her as she dug into her purse to get money and, and she was digging in her purse and she was thinking, I've got to be somewhere. Would you please get out of my way? And said it got so bad that the thought ran through her mind, if it wouldn't hurt my car, I'd just put my bumper against hers and push her out of the way. I'd push her through that line, and the woman kept digging, and the thought went through her mind, Lady, if you couldn't afford a Chick-fil-A sandwich, then for goodness sakes, don't hold me up. My time is too important. It's too valuable. 
She said by the time she got to the window that she was so angry that she was short with the person that, you know, was taking the money. She thrust her money out and the girl behind the window said these words to her. Ma'am, I'd love to take your money, but the woman that was in front of you paid for yours. Your meal has been paid for. <laughs> she said, I felt so embarrassed. I felt so ashamed that I was in such a hurry that I never even considered that somebody would do something nice for me. I never considered that. I want to challenge you this week to do something in order to get in the mood for Christmas I want you to do just a random act of kindness for somebody. I don't know what it, it might cost you a dollar. It might cost you five dollars. It might cost you not a cent out of your pocket. It could be something that somebody doesn't even know you're doing for them or you do it without griping or you do it without complaining about it. You just simply do a random act that people don't expect you to do. That's just something that you don't need to even let them worry about. And don't let them know who did it. Now, I will give you this guarantee. If it doesn't make a difference in your life, if you'll come see me in the next, if you try that and it doesn't work and it costs you, come and see me and I will give you back what it costs you to do that. I make you that promise. Now, if one of you comes up and says, I gave $1,000, I'm going to be suspect, all right? <laughs> I know you're too good for that. I'm teasing, but I want you to do that. I want you to see how little effort it really takes in order for us to once again bring balance back to ourselves. You're going to hear the Christmas story. You hear it every Sunday. You hear it time and time and time again. You know the story. You've heard it so long that you can repeat it by heart. It's part, of your, it's part of your DNA. It's part of who you are. Would you close your eyes one more time? What do you hear different in this story? A shoot shall come up out of the stump of Jesse and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth righteousness righteousness shall be the belt around his waist and faithfulness the belt around his loins the wolf shall live with the lamb folks this is a description of the world is going to be different it's turned upside down it's not what it is the wolf shall live with the lamb the leopard shall lie down with the kid and the calf and the lion and the fatling together and a little child shall lead them wow you may open your eyes folks what an incredible thing to think that the gift that god has sent can change the world in that fashion that can do something that that is that incredible can change it so that the dangers that that we know are the dangers that they're no longer they're no longer dangers to us but they are filled and are replaced with the hope and the promise of a life in Christ. Will you pray with me? The Christmas season, oh God, is upon us. And to many that means that of running and shopping and wrapping and 